Animated logos can capture and hold the viewer's attention more effectively than static logos. There has been a noticeable decline in people's attention span in recent years, influenced mainly by smartphones and social media. Not our fault our generation has short attention spans. This is also one of the main reasons why there is a need for animated logos. Join me and my friend Ina as we analyze some amazing animated logos and discuss how to create them. First category that I think is one of the most popular one for logo reveals is the kinetic type and morphing. I put them together because there is always like an overlap between these. So usually when we have a kinetic type, there would also be some kind of morphing happening. And morphing, I mean changing from one detail to another. You also use this in one of the projects in our course, which has the icons morphing from one to another. Are these tricky to do? What do you normally do when you work on logo animations like this? In my experience, they're more tricky than the character animation logo reveals, just because it's very hard sometimes to come up with ideas on how to morph them from icon to icon. And also you have to have like a fully prepared storyboard before you get started and make sure all the icons are in the same style. They are simple enough so you can transition between the icons but not too simple because otherwise the animation will be boring so that's why i think these are more tricky to create than the other type of animations for sure some of the examples that we have here on the board although it looks simple or minimalist like the google one is an amazing example of that but to make the animation feel lively and dynamic and interesting there's a lot of subtleties that goes into it. So all of those anticipation that we see before something happening, because just like with logos in general, less is more, the shapes themselves are extremely simple. There is no shading, there's no texturing, there's only a little bit of drop shadow at the end on the, on the circle. But besides that, it's literally just these four colors and simple shapes animating, showing the waveform, the loading, and all kinds of hidden messages there that represents Google and what Google stands for. It's pretty impressive when they can do that. Absolutely. For example, these four circles that go, like they move, one circle goes to the left, the other one goes to the right. Uh, that one is actually not that simple to create in After Effects, although it looks simple. And it refers back to the 12 principles of animation from Disney. Uh, you know, anticipation, there is timing, staging, there's a lot uh, going on here. So it's like as if somebody who is a really, really, a really good animator just went back to the basics and created an animation that kind of uh, showcase the 12 principles in a super easy manner because you know how when people start uh, learning about animations they use the circle to uh, practice anticipation or to practice something else we also have a course actually on the principles of animation one of my friend Özgür recorded this he goes through all of these he actually uses cinema 4d to explain them but the principles apply to everything so uh, including obviously logo reveals i recently came across this one this is a fairly new one from freepick they just rebranded recently and they created this banner which is obviously a bigger format for logo reveals it's not like a separate element that we can see but there's lots of elements going around here i especially like how they bring our attention to that little quirky detail in the logo itself that the eye is more like exclamation mark so it like flips around and becomes an exclamation mark and that's that's really like the last detail that's being animated so it's highlighted or it gets extra attention and also in the first phase of the logo the text is more like an average width on all of the letters but then it gets distorted so that's one of the other quirks of the logo or, or unique details that again gets highlighted by the animation and i think that's that's always a clever thing to do use the logo reveal to highlight the interesting details in a logo or the details that you want to communicate and usually these are the details that convey the brand personality anyway. So just highlighting them or exaggerating them with the animation is a very clever thing to do. 
the way the line transforms to other shapes that then transform into letters is also another opportunity for you to add your own elements or to emphasize something. Because here they don't say, for example, that there are a lot of elements in free pick, but at least to me, this says we have a very rich library of assets, or at least this is how I interpret it. Even if you have a very simple logo, there are clever ways where you can add things in the transition to communicate your branding and your elements or your personality. Yeah, 100%. And when we look at it frame by frame, another interesting thing is actually it starts with the exclamation mark. So that's the origin of the logo. It starts off from that and all the elements start to emerge and morph from that. So all the other details come out of that. And then eventually we get the exclamation mark back. There's one moment that again, it's visible, but then it turns into an eye. And then at the end, it turns back into uh, the exclamation mark. So yeah, it keeps appearing throughout the animation. So it's like that subliminal messaging of like continuously reminding us of that detail. And that's something that they really wanted us to remember throughout the branding, I guess. So it's a quite nice and subtle way of inserting it again, even at the very beginning, although it's like literally just for a couple of frames. So most people won't even notice that, I think. But the animation reminds me of what you've done with the, the Cashew logo which of course is also in the course. What makes this tricky to animate this uh, project? At least from my perspective, the most difficult part is coming up with ideas on how to animate it, uh, how to transition it, how to make it smooth rather than the technical part itself. Because the technical part, when you learn the logic behind the software, at some point you already know how to create something when you when you see it, either when you see a reference or when you see it in your head, like when you imagine it. So to me, always the most difficult part is how to come up with the idea, because you literally start with like a blank canvas. So you have the logo and now, now you have to figure out how to do it. And my goal when I was creating it was to have it jumpy, to have it cartoony, but not in a typical kind of way with cartoony shapes or a very powerful background or things like that, that you immediately think of when you think of something that's engaging and powerful, uh, but in a more subtle way. And that was my thinking behind this one. There's interesting examples like Skategram doesn't actually have the skateboard in the logo, but still they managed to fuse it into it. And then the skateboard itself merges into the text. But yeah, like if you don't have any element, just the text itself, you have to be creative how you reveal the logo and how you add that additional personality to it. So this, this is a good example. But of course, just the text itself can have also a lot of personality with the way the letters appear, like the playfulness just like you said. And again, the anticipation here. So we have that elongated line, which then goes into a circle and that puts the little dot at the end. It's all about the planning and all about the storyboard that someone comes up with before they do an animation like this, I guess. Logo animations are the perfect way to start your After Effects journey. A good custom logo animation is priced between 1,000 to 9,000 US dollars. But after Effects is a complex software. My name is Ina and I'm the CEO and founder of Cashew. I have seven years of experience in this field and I have worked with brands like Nissan, Yale and UNICEF. In this course, I'll teach you how to create these three logo animations. First, we have the mascot logo where you learn a bit more about character animation. Next, I'll show you the most important motion graphics techniques. And last but not least, you'll learn more about kinetic typography animation. You also receive the project files for all the animations. I'm super excited to work with you, so let's get started. There are millions of different ways that you can animate a logo. I think the most important thing when you start is just figure out what's your idea, what's the message that you want to tell. Start from there because I, while I was animating, it's very easy to get into the details a lot. And it's better to zoom out a little bit and just remind yourself what is the goal rather than trying multiple effects. The most important thing is uh, making sure you have one idea from the start and following it throughout the animation. Here is another logo reveal, which is more of like handwritten lettering logo. And the, the logo animation itself is making it look like it's being drawn. 
and it's quite nice because it feels like brush strokes thanks to the the way it's been revealed so those colorful strokes appearing but then they turn into this nice crisp outline and then everything nicely falls into place and there's also these little shapes adding motion to the whole thing as it's being revealed and i guess timing is extremely important for logo reveals because most of them are only a few seconds long so you have to compress a lot into that and you have to really plan out the timing what what appears first what you want to draw the attention to and then how it progresses throughout the animation there is no formula for timing yeah you just have to feel it or you just have to watch it up uh, one billion times until you think it's uh, it's okay. Uh, there is no formula like, for example, the logo review should be three seconds or five seconds because there are logo reviews that are 10 seconds. They're still engaging and very good. This ties more to the usage because, for example, if you want to use your logo in an email signature, I wouldn't recommend having a 10 second uh, logo review because your goal is you have your branding uh, visible at all times and people won't look at 10 seconds to, to see the logo. Uh, but if it's part of an explainer video, for example, it can be more than 10 seconds even because you can have like a creative sequence of morphing one to the next to the next and then uh, finally you see the logo. So this is similar to, to what you have right now uh, on screen. I don't know if that one is longer. I think it's 17 seconds. Yeah, so it's a around 15 seconds long, I think. If I play just from the beginning to the end in real time, it's around 15 seconds. So yeah, it's definitely a longer one. But like you said, it depends on where the animation is going to be used, whether it's just on social media or a website or some, some other format. I guess the length of the animation can vary. Maybe that is also something that can be in a brief that you need to create multiple length uh, animations. You might need to do a shorter one and a longer one. And then it depends where the logo is, is going to be used. Uh, this one, if you, if you just look at it, first, it doesn't make a lot of sense. There are like some shapes, it's longer. So there are a lot of things going on, but you can't really understand what, what is going on uh, until the very end. Uh, so first, when I saw it, I told that mm, it is kind of a bit generic, like that was my first impression. But then I saw the logo, which said great uh, lighting. Uh, I think that was, a, that was a brand or something. So I was like, oh, okay, now it makes sense why these are the lights and then the shadows and they create the logo so this is what I mean um, that the usage is crucial here because I would imagine this being on like on repeat on an event uh, for example because it tells more about the business and what they do but for social media for example I think this is too long at least from my perspective yeah yeah this is a great example uh, made by James the designer who did this one uh, we have the link in the description uh, or in the on the Milan Old board. He has some amazing examples on his Pinterest. Um, all of that, the work that he's done. Yeah, he's he's definitely a really good animator, but also designer in general. So definitely worth checking his work out. I have uh, a few examples of uh, mascots as well. We've already seen that one, the Geraldine personal branding uh, animation. Here's our llama uh, from the course again. Was this a tricky one to create? What was your process on this one? This one, I think, was um, the least tricky one because I really enjoyed it. And I was so looking forward to animating this llama. By the way, Martin designed this llama and uh, I was so, so, I like when I saw it, because I saw the full illustration, it was like, oh, great, let's create something with this llama because it's so cute. With, with this one, uh, it was really easy for me to come up with the concept because I've done a lot of character animations because it's um, something I really enjoy doing. So these uh, character animations are kind of come more naturally to me, like to kind of understand them and to come up with ideas. That was definitely super fun to animate. Yeah, I really like how it turned out and it's always great to see an illustration you do animated by someone else. I also like this style of hand-drawn quality and it could be lettering used for a lettering like we've seen with the Just Do Art or this fluid shape I really like, this circle, how it comes together from um, these fluids. I believe something like this is probably easiest to do by actually drawing these frames individually. 
in tools like Procreate. Uh, there's actually an app coming out from Procreate in uh, November, Procreate Dreams. I was there at the announcement here in London, the playground event. I had a chance to try it out myself. It's an amazing frame animation tool where you can do everything frame by frame, just like working in Procreate, but just much more powerful for animation. Or Adobe Fresco is another one that I can think of that, again, you can do on the iPad and do animation like that. Do you think it's good to specialize and be known for a particular type of animation or is it good to be more versatile? I think, uh, well, I used to say before that it would be, it's better to specialize, but like right now, just the way the market works is you always need a number of skills or a number of uh, different um, experiences with different type of animation. So yeah, it's very rare uh, someone doing uh, logo animations only. When I was looking at examples, I found this on Dribble. So he, he created this for the Apple uh, event in 2018, October. And I actually remember that they've done lots of different versions for the Apple logo. And I managed to dig it out and find all of these logos. There is the logo that uh, we saw the animation for, but there is also one here, which is quite interesting on the most recent Apple event. They used titanium for the new iPhone 15. They actually used something very similar to this. So it's like the particles effect that we can see on this example. And also something that they used in the uh, Apple TV series foundation intro. I don't know if you've seen it. It's a beautiful intro. I, I love it. I that's one of the intros that I keep watching every time for every episode of the series. That's just, just unbelievable how nice it is. And uh, it's definitely inspired, I think, the animation that they then used for the event and the, the website. For those who would like to learn from Ina and find out about these projects that we talked about here, the link is in the description below. You can find the course there and also there is a special discount that you can get if you follow that link. We hope you find this video useful and uh, let us know in the comments below if you have uh, anything else that you would like to see us cover in, in an upcoming video. Once again, thank you so much for helping me discuss all of these things, Ina. Of course. Thank you, Timarin. Always a pleasure. And I really enjoy these talks. So I'm very happy to cover more topics or discuss some other animations if the viewers find it useful. So please don't hesitate to let us know in the comments. And also don't forget to check out uh, Kashu Academy, the YouTube channel uh, and Ina's Instagram. Again, the links are also in the description below. But thanks again. And I will see you guys in the next one.